Today, I will teach you how to use the command pattern with the example of programming a remote controller, or really just pretending to program one. It's another pattern to help us reduce if and else if statements in our programs and make the code more object-oriented, whatever that means. Before we begin, let's take a look at how we could have programmed a remote controller without using the command pattern. I've already defined a few receivers we'll be using, Light, Netflix, and YouTube. Think of the receivers as classes with business logic that do the actual work once they're asked to do something. We also have a remote control class that has a list of eight slots. In this class, we have an on button pressed method. It takes in a slot index, which represents the button pressed on the remote. And inside the method, we have a bunch of if and else if statements to have the remote execute some of these receivers actions. We can now test this remote. First, we create a new instance of the remote control class. And then we call the on button pressed method with an argument whose value is between zero and seven. As you can see, it works quite well. But what if our remote had dozens of different actions and potentially some other functionality such as undo? That's where the command pattern starts being useful. First, we define a command interface with the execute method on it. And since it's Python, the interface will be just a class whose execute method will throw a not implemented error. Then let's create a single command for now, a light on command class, which will implement the command interface whose constructor will take in the light receiver and whose execute method will call the on method on that receiver. Now let's define the remote class a bit differently. We'll call it a simple remote control and use it just to show what we're doing without too much noise. We'll redefine it to be a fully functional remote control in just a bit. The simple remote control class will have a single slot field of command type. It will have a set command method that takes in the command instance and just sets the slot on the remote to the passed in command. It will also have a button was pressed method that will call the execute method on the stored command instance. Now, if we create an instance of the simple remote control, set the light on command on the remote and call the button was pressed method, we see that our simple remote is now functional. Before we go to implement the fully functional remote, let's see what happens if we call button was pressed before setting the command. Well, nothing good. We get an attribute error. None type object has no attribute execute. That's because we set the slot field to none by default. What we can do instead is define a new command. We can call it no command, which just does what I do most of the time, nothing. Now we can set the slot field to an instance of no command instead, and our remote won't do anything, but also won't give us errors. Before we go and rewrite our remote again, let's look at the command pattern diagram. There are four components. We've already seen the command interface. Face. Typically, it will have a single method execute on it. The invoker or sender is the remote control class. All it does is store a reference to a command or multiple commands and send a request to a receiver. The receiver is the class that contains the actual business logic. So in our case, light is the receiver. Finally, we have the client. The client creates the command objects and configures the remote. The client in our case is our program after the if double underscore name, double underscore double equals, double underscore main, double underscore line, but it could also be just another class if our program were bigger. Now back to the remote. The new remote control class will store a list of slots, each of the command type. In the constructor, we will initialize each slot to no command instance. That way we won't see those attribute errors if we click a button that has not been assigned the command yet. Our set command method signature will change to take not only the command but also the slot index and set the command on the given slot. And on button pressed method will take in the slot index and call the execute method on the command at that slot. Let's add a few additional commands, a light off, Netflix on, and YouTube on commands. Now we can test the remote, but first we have to set it up. Let's create an instance of the new remote control class. Then we can initialize new receivers, light, Netflix, and YouTube. After that, we'll initialize light on, light off, Netflix on, and YouTube on commands. And then we can set these commands to indices zero through three. Finally, we can call on button pressed on the remote for each of these indices and see that our remote is working. 